the reason this is an important concern is because uh, Isle Royale is also a federally designated wilderness. And federally designated wildernesses, these are the places in our country where the, the, the kind of normal understanding of management is non-intervention, kind of let nature take its course. It's a very important principle. But one of the things that's a little complicated is that it's not the only value that it's, that's at stake in a case like this and in other cases. And so, for example, another uh, value that's at stake is, is an idea of ecosystem health. And one thing that most people understand, most scientists understand, is that wherever there are places with uh, large ungulates, that means like deer or moose or something like that, there should also be large predators. And so we have a situation on Isle Royale where there are these kind of conflicting values, non-intervention versus maybe thinking more about ecosystem health. And the reason that it's important to kind of think through this carefully is because even if you've never been to a wilderness area, Wilderness areas are still, uh, they're important for framing how it is that we think about nature in general. And so however it is that we, that we treat wilderness areas, you know, they affect kind of our overall relationship with nature. And so, so it's an important question for that reason. The situation on Isle Royale is particular, and it's particular in this way. So it's an island, and because it's an island, the population is small. And so there's a risk of extinction just naturally occurring. But there's two other factors that are kind of important. One is that disease has affected the population a couple of times in, in the past. And if wolves go extinct in the near future, disease will be kind of a part of that cause. And the thing is, is that humans brought that disease to Isle Royale. Another concern is that uh, the way it is that wolves got to Isle Royale is they got there by crossing over an ice bridge. And ice bridges now form less frequently than they used to, and that's because of climate warming. And of course, humans have had a role in, in, in climate warming. And so the wilderness policy, it's in its essence, really goes like this, is that it's best to let nature play its course to non-intervention. But if humans have altered something, then it makes sense to kind of uh, ameliorate whatever it is that humans have done. And so the concern in this case is that humans are not, uh, it's not as though humans have had no effect here. There's been some effect. And the reason, well, so it's a particular situation on Isle Royale for sure, but the reason that it has implications really for the entire country is, is that there's no place in the United States that humans haven't impacted in some way or another. And so it just begs the question, you know, what's the best way to treat wilderness when in fact there may not be any places that we haven't affected and so and it's 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 challenging but it's also a normal thing to think of because the idea of wilderness whatever it is that we think wilderness means that's been evolving over time and so in the beginning of the 20th century our ideas of wilderness were kind of wrapped up with kind of Teddy Roosevelt it's where you go to prove your manhood kind of stuff and uh, we you know you cut down trees to make shelters and make fires to stay warm and all that kind of stuff and by the mid-20th century, we came to understand, well, if everybody did that when they went into wilderness areas, and wilderness areas by the mid-20th century are becoming less common, it's not going to turn out too well. It's from that kind of thinking that, we, that gave rise to things like leave no trace and gave rise to the principles of non-intervention. So those are good and important ideas, and they'll remain good and important ideas. But now, at the beginning of the 21st century, we realize, wow, there aren't that many places that humans haven't already altered. And so this idea of let nature take its course as long as humans haven't interfered with it, it's, it may need to be updated a little bit. And there's a lot of scholars all over the country that are working diligently to kind of figure out the best way to think about these sorts of issues. And, uh, and what happens is Isle Royale has now become uh, what's a place to kind of think about it in the real world and in a place that people are interested in because there's wolves and moose there and people are interested in that. We should be concerned, that's for sure, and uh, things you know don't look good if you're a betting person. You know, the, it, it looks plausible at the least that, that things won't go well for wolves. There's no need to take action right at this moment, and the National Park Service is, is in the middle of a process uh, you know, trying to figure out what's the best course of action. That decision-making process takes time, and we'll, uh, we're going to ignore that. Uh, oh.
you know, this this question of is it is it urgent? Does something need to be done right now? No, nothing needs to be done right now. The National Park Service uh, will be deciding before too long what's the right course of action. And because it's a complicated thing, you know, it takes time to make a good decision. And um, the population isn't going to go anywhere in the next year or two or even three. And so, so there's time to make a good decision. And uh, but, but now is the right time to make a decision, and the Park Service is engaged in that right now.